right, everybody, welcome back to the legendary interview section. Really excited today. Got my beautiful, beautiful guest here to the side of me, Imani. Don't say anything else because <laughs> I got I knew I was wrong. I knew I was wrong, but I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try it anyway. But I asked her beforehand, so I can say it correctly. It is Imani. And uh yeah, we got a good one for y'all today. But before we begin, welcome to the stage of history. I am your illustrious host, Kevin Uncanny Anytime. And all right, so I found Imani on TikTok, man. She's got a really nice following. I saw one of the viral videos. You had like the 6 a.m. thing. I, we actually might chime in on that too. Cause I'm like, wait, what or say like 4 a.m. or something like that to where it was like you probably just I don't know. You tapped in real quick and just was like, hold up. I got to give y'all some information. I barely sleep. <laughs> yeah. uh, but before we before we jump into that, um, she has a book that is completed and out. Uh, and it's just is it just the ebook? Yes. OK. Um, and it is called Omniscience. But before we get into that, uh, go ahead and just introduce yourself and let them know, let everybody know where they can follow you and stuff. My name is Imani Ariane Williams, and I've, I'm on pretty much any social media. I'm pretty popular on TikTok with all my science stuff, if you want to find me there. If you want to know about my personality, go on Instagram. I'm frequent on those stories. And on YouTube, that's just for me to brain dump if you just want to sit for a minute and listen to me rant <laughs> about life. But that's, uh, that's me. They're all Imani Ariane. Got you. All right. Okay. So yeah, let's talk about the the book that you just you just finished, Omniscience. Right. So how how did you come about that? What was the idea behind that, uh, or what sparked the idea behind that? I had a lot of information, and it was really heavy, weighing he heavy on me actually. And something that I believe in is the universal laws, and specifically the universal law of the perpetual transmutation of energy. And so energy is information. And if I'm not taking what I know and putting it out in a way that is aligned with me, then it just becomes a burden. I feel, I always say to know and not do is to just be as stagnant as a tree because a tree doesn't really go anywhere. It doesn't move, but it does spread, you know, throughout networks. And so I wanted to know a better way that I could integrate this knowledge. And um, it was a, it was basically me taking my scatterbrain thoughts and putting it all into a structure, which, yes, was very difficult, but it was relieving after I finished all of it because I was then able to see the tangible aspect of my knowledge. And that then be, is now going to be the groundwork for me to break it apart <laughs> and explain it better. That's really what I wanted to do. I just wanted to put all my eggs in one basket and then pick them out and explain it. <laughs> Nice. Okay. So what would you probably like, you gonna make like a, a course out of it? Or is it gonna be like a material out of, for a, um, you know, a talk or something like that? Or most likely a top. Uh, I want to break it down into a series on YouTube or just continue to um, make shorter form videos on TikTok. My overall goal, though, is I do want to start speaking. So if I can just start practicing getting my word out there, that um that'll be great so hopefully it'll it'll make me do more books i've already as soon as i finished that book actually i was like i know exactly the next book i want to write so mm. i'm very much one day at a time i'm gonna get up and let my cat in but i still oh okay cool um i'm i'm actually i'm the same way man um which is interesting but as far as the uh as far as the book how long did it take you to to complete it uh, Three days. Oh, dang. Okay. <laughs> I, I, so a lot of the book itself was uh, all of the stuff is written first. Matter of fact, um, I want to show you. So anytime I do work, it is a channel piece of work, but it only took a long time because I like to write it out first. It's essentially channeled work. So I. Wait, three days is a long time to you. <laughs> I'm like, you said a long time, and I kept thinking way longer than that. You were like, it took me about three days. I'm like, what? Well, that was it's, it's also because I don't have, 
I mean, I do have a job. I just sit here. I have time. And so time is very important. That's that's what I trade. So I trade time for um, for that. So I'm able to just sit and put my passion on a piece of paper. But the only reason why it takes me a long time is because I like to write it out first. So um, all my books, like they're all written, which is the channeled piece of work. And then I digitize it by just speech to text. And so all of these papers are back to back of all of the writings. And that's how I did it. And I mean, it was great. Now I'm like all smiling because it did take <laughs> three days. That, no, that's freaking phenomenal, dude. So, so, yeah, I caught myself writing a book. It took me a year. All right. So that's why I'm like, what, three days? You said but a long time. I, part, part of me sort of gets, and I, I discredit myself sometimes. I, I try to watch myself because people are like, you know, you write a book, you wrote a book. And I was like, oh, it's just an ebook. It's just an ebook. But something that some of my people are closest to me, they'll be like, yes, Imani, but you take complex topics and you make them so simplified that you only need 100 pages or you only need seven. Yeah. And that realizing that I'm like, wow, that's really crazy. All of the, the book itself is just a collection of about six journals, books that I've had, no papers, sticky notes. And I think that's what made it also just easier was I just needed to just sit and put it together. Got you. So if I may, I'm going to just give uh, my, my viewers here a small glimpse of what this looks like, because um, I, I thought it was just really cool. Just the design that you that you created, too, because um, that also plays a part in it, too. You know, you could just leave it just white with blank with black words. Right. It could be blank, but it is a very unique the way it's designed, which is what I thought was really cool about it. Um, but let me go ahead and thank you, Canva Pro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So boom, here we go. So um, this is, and I'm sorry, this is a terrible, but I, what are the like, give me some details on the rings, the the kind of the background you got going on here. So here it is, guys. This is uh I went and purchased it because I was like, nope, she's spitting facts out here. Let me go, <laughs> let me go see what's up. Um and yeah, like this right here, this is what I'm talking about where we on the same frequency. You have the mind of Imani. Mm -hmm. And I I've created this playlist on a different YouTube uh back in the day called The Mind of Anytime because mm. I call myself Kevin oh. anytime. And I'm like, yo, I, I'm right there. I was like, okay, hold on. We starting to, I'm connecting. But uh, this right here, a guidebook of understanding consciousness on both planes of existence. Man, just that right there. And because I used to write raps, like that's a, that's bars right there. Like just the way that sounds, that's, what's, that's what trips me out. Just the way that sounds. I'm like, man, that is the wordplay and and the way it sounds for some reason i don't know i'm fascinated with it but anyway um if you could just give us a little background on how why why is this designed the way it is what, are, what um, is it? if there is a and i like how you you know these table of contents like this that's it's really interesting to me i was like what <laughs> but yeah give me a little um, detail on the cover I mean, it's not, it's nothing crazy deep. Like I made it on Canva. That was an already a uh, pre one, but something that I believe in is because everything is set out for me, destiny, things happen like that. So other people will create stuff for it to be exactly for you. And so what it, mm -hmm. I, think I chose it was because I do like neutrals. I like black and white, but black and white also represents duality. Uh, existence is dual dualistic. Um, so black and white, uh, yin and yang. That's also what it reminded me of. But the rings reminded me of um, the expansion of the universe. How you know you you drop an intention and you it has a ripple effect essentially. And so that's what that's what that is. Is it reminds me of resonance. It reminds me of energy, vibration, frequency. Just how things are ever going and expanding outward. If I were. To Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, even though e even if it was a, a pre filled thing, like sometimes, like you said, that's how stuff lines up. Sometimes you're just like, oh, yeah, this works. Boom, Everything you just drop it in there. Yeah, that's yeah. Because I was like, man, this is I don't know. Yeah. The way the 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 bold, like the small, the bold, the, it's just it all fits together. And uh, 
Yeah, man. I'm not even. I'm not gonna. I, I'm not gonna give you guys too much of a glimpse, but I do, in, can, yeah. I do encourage you to look at this. Like, here's just a table of contents. Okay, the urge towards de occultization, mm -hmm. consciousness and evolution, patchwork trailblazer, the medium for thought. The end. I got tired. <laughs> Interesting. I'm gonna leave y'all on a cliffhanger with that one, <laughs> man. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta get it to see what's I, up. I, it, I'm so funny. I, I just call myself. It's not la that I'm lazy. It's just I always have this, this big dream of obviously what I want for for um for anything that I create. And sometimes I will just get too ahead of myself. Like originally it was going to be 10 chapters and I was going to keep going and break it down even further. But that's sometimes my problems is I just have such a big idea and I overwhelm myself and then I won't do it. And so something that got me to keep going was I saw this video about, who was it Steve Jobs or something? Um, yeah about how, what if Steve Jobs had the iPhone 11 in his mind at the time of the iPhone one or the first iPhone, he was like, if he stopped when he saw the iPhone one, he was like, it, he never would have evolved. And so I thought about that. And so as I write it, I'm very much a work as I go type of thing. It always plays out in the end. And um, as I was writing, I was like, you know what? I was like, I can close these together. I can put these together. And I got towards the end. And because this is such channeled work and it is information overload, um, I actually, after the book is written, I need to go ground. I need to take a step back because it's sometimes, not sometimes, it's exhausting. And so by the time I got to the end that third day, uh, I always work in threes, just like the universe. Uh, to me, that's how things become uh, permanent is just that's my system. So on the third day, I, I just was exhausted. And I was like, I'm just going to name this. I'm tired. And I just let myself just fully in that chapter, just go, this is just what's on my thought, uh, on my mind. And I just called it a stream of consciousness to where I just let it out. And at the end, it basically, I was like, I could go on. I was like, but I'm exhausted. I was like, the book is over. <laughs> there you go. And that's, that's the reasoning behind that title. I'm, I'm, I like to keep it authentic and real. Yeah, that's that's definitely a key with with everything. The way that everything is set up nowadays, it's it's hard to the freaking deep fakes and all different type of stuff. It's hard to really see what's what's authentic and real nowadays. Anyway, so that's that's appreciated. Um, yeah, definitely never lose lose that. Um, but yeah, you also because along with the the purchase, there was another um, there was another book, I believe, or or a. Uh, what was that that comes I, uh, out? I actually forgot that I had made that. And just in the way that the emails get sent, I had made a, um, as I'm starting to figure out just what, what I'm being led to do, there was this one part where I basically made just a quick PDF about just my thoughts on moving as a, moving within a faith-based journey. Um, my name is Imani and it actually is Ethiopian for faith. I'm not Ethiopian, but it means faith. And so something my mom always is telling me, she's like, you know, if you ever start to doubt yourself, she's like, just remember your name, have faith in yourself. It means faith. And so I wanted to just write that up. And when I went to go just plug up the email stuff, I saw that I still had that and I didn't really do anything with this. I was like, you know what, let me just throw it in because, you know, at the end of the day, sometimes, again, people just need a perspective shift. And so if any of my words can just pivot people, I, I'll give it freely. So. Uh huh. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm actually trying to look for it. I don't know why I can't find it right now. I just had it on my desktop, but that's, I never, I never even proofread that. I just kind of threw it out, but <laughs> <laughs> all right that's cool um that's something else that i'm gonna definitely look into too but yeah i just thought it was really interesting because i was like wow okay so you really have two books technically um right? so the so i do have two books i actually have two books and then the the um the omni science is my second book so it's uh the first one is the mind of from the mind of imani which i guess i'm now called that's just kind of the series i guess but uh, The Mind of Imani, I did the quantum mechanics behind angel numbers. And in that book, I explained um, consciousness in evolution. I talked about the differentiation of consciousness. So that was my first steps to it. Uh, but I didn't elaborate all the way on it. The purpose of that was to explain that 
consciousness is breaking itself down to understand itself. And I wanted to present that so that people could have a basis for then understanding angel numbers. So yes, it's a guide to angel numbers, but it's still the very scientific point of view that I have. I believe that consciousness itself is the foundation for everything. So if everyone can understand that, you can understand anything. So that's that book. And then the Omni Science goes deeper into the beginning of the angel number book. So the faith-based little paper, that that's literally just a PDF that I just wrote up. I just like to do that and throw it out there. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah, now that, now that's interesting. So what, what is your take on, I'm sure people have some, some questions on that. What is your take on angel numbers? What, what was your concepts on that? So angel numbers themselves, I, uh, the, 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 um, what's the word, uh, for lack of a better word, I'm just saying the stereotypes of angel numbers, the triple numbers, mm -hmm. um, I know that everybody, we, we have the same guide for it and they do have certain meanings, but what I, what I understood, mm, give me a sec. What I did was I came across the Nic Nikola Tesla saying, if you could understand the magnificence of three, six, nine, you can understand anything. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, bet. Because at that time I was understanding angel numbers. I was learning about them, but in a deeper sense, because it's just me. And right. I didn't want to learn. I had heard about Nikola Tesla's 369, but I didn't want to read about uh, his stuff because something that I say is I, I call my life a science experiment. And so I was like, okay, if Nikola Tesla did this, uh, creating three six or uh, his life around the numbers 369, I should be able to do the same thing. So I just took that idea and I created my own understanding of the numbers zero through nine. And I came to an understanding of what zero through nine meant. And then I began to plug that into angel numbers and so much so that, and then actually applying my knowledge through my experience to where you can give me just a, a, not even repeating numbers, you can give me a set of numbers. And because I understand the energy and the vibration of the numbers individually, I can just talk about it. I can tell you what the message is. So if I, if someone were to give me, a, let's use my, if I, I could go so deep into it because I started learning about binary code, but uh, well, I'll use the numbers 502. Um, mm -hmm. 502 is my birthday, uh, May 2nd. And so the numbers 502 is basically represents my uh, intention in this lifetime. The number five represents transformation change. It's movement forward, continuous movement forward. The number zero represents um, neutral. It represents uh, new beginnings. It also represents for me, uh, uh, making a yes or no decision. I think uh, that the universe is very binary. It's either a yes or no to what you want to do. Um, and then the number two represents intuition. It goes deeper into um, uh, like high priestess energy, intuition. Uh, I think about um, faith, trust in yourself. And so when I see the numbers 502, it's always a reminder that change comes from trusting myself. It comes from pushing forward in new uh, uh, new journeys, new avenues and changing and discovering myself through that, that change and transformation. And so with just doing that, like I said, because this life is an attention experiment, I just started to naturally become in tune with the universe in that way to where the universe started to speak to me through numbers to where when it came to angel numbers, I was like, oh, I was like, this is exactly the same thing. So in the angel number book, it's not necessarily angel number one, 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 two, two, two. It just goes over. This is the vibration of zero. This is the vibration of one. This is the vibration of so on and so forth. And again, I, I just want to give everybody a foundation or, or uh, some type of groundwork to where they can then take it for themselves and create their own little program. Um, and then I used personal experience because, again, we're... I believe that human beings were here to understand through each other. So that book got really deep because, and I actually healed through that book as well, because I explained certain numbers, like the number four is all about stability and home is where the heart is. And during that time, I had just lost my apartment and I moved back home to my mom. And I talked about that. And so if people could have real perspectives when they see these numbers, they can think and be like, you know, well, I read about the number four and how Imani lost her job and how she was rebuilding her foundation. So then when people see 444, four, four, they can think about like, you know, Imani was having this uh, experience. So how can I take that and that filter and then like look to see where that filter is on my life. And 
people tell me all the time, they're like, it, it's really helpful because I'm like, yeah, like it's more than just surface level. I'm always about going deeper. Yeah. Um, because <laughs> this is tripping me out because so from what i've been experiencing because I, I call myself a scientist of life right which is very interesting because yeah. you just said i'm you know i'm sciencing my own life or or it was a way you positioned it mm -hmm. it just resonated the same and i'm like okay this is interesting because as of late what i've been seeing is that i'm especially with all of the deep self-work that i'm doing um, I'm starting to now be able to attract people that I have been looking for, I feel like yeah. my entire life. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I'm like, okay, this is for us to connect. Like I was saying behind the scenes is very interesting. Um, because I felt this, this resonance with us and there's this thing that I would love to hear your take on it. I feel like there are essences of, of people that you are like a silver lining through mm -hmm. right and so like and, and this can sound however you want to sound but this is just the way that i've felt you know i feel like i have an essence of bruce lee i have an essence of mm -hmm. michael jordan i have an essence of um oh. certain individuals do you have you ever or yeah no hey the speech you're you're right up the alley i um i do uh, Albert Einstein, uh, a lot of the famous scientists, um, mm. I, the books that I read uh, as well, um, what I do, they're from, they're from like the 1940s. So these people are passed away, but because of my belief in consciousness and understanding that all time is happening all the time. And because I am a, I don't like to use the words, I'm not psychic, but it's just, I understand consciousness. So I just call on these energies, call on these essence and I help them work through me. So when I'm studying Newton's laws, I call upon the consciousness of, of Newton, the essence mm, of Newton, and okay. I write the channel. So that's what I mean by, I write stuff first because it's channeled work. Um, I also, I'm really big into Audrey Hepburn, Lucille Ball, but those all hold certain meanings from for me because it's the essence of those people. Audrey Hepburn, um, just like, you know, the demeanor, Lucille Ball with um, uh, putting forward your 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 authenticity in, in expressing yourself, like Leo energy, I think about. So I, yeah, definitely, I feel like we we carry those essences and all of the 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 people that you that, that you noted, I agree, I feel that same energy and that all just snowballs into who we are today. But on a grander scale, that's what consciousness is doing is we're all here to experience life because uh, uh, at the end of this all, not to, you know, get to to like um, give anybody like existential crisis or anything, but we're headed towards a black hole that's going to explode for the sole purpose of then restarting itself. So all the information we're learning through different people, through different lifetimes, it's all going to create a new foundation for a new universe. So in a way, we're all the same people and we're borrowing from what we've learned. I, I That's not a, a sideways thought at all for me. That's what's up, dude. Yeah, no, that's, that's really interesting. Wow, those are some pretty classic people that you mentioned there too. Um, I can see that as well in, in you because it's, <laughs> You're, yeah, man, you, you deep, dude, you dive, you be diving John, deep on stuff. Um, the theoretical physicist, John Archibald Wheeler is, is one of the first people that I really enjoy and I feel really close to. It's just, he was saying, uh, one of his quotes was the first quote that really got me into it was basically in any field, in any field ever, find the strangest thing and study it, figure out what it is and just go for it and try to understand it. And that's really cool is just thinking about these people, uh, like I said, Einstein, Newton, and John Archibald Wheeler, they were they were just as crazy and silly uh, and, and just wide uh, sideways thinkers, but that's what you have to do. And so that's why I kind of get, I don't get upset, but I do have an understanding where people are like, that's science or yada, yada, yada. I'm like, did you know Newton was actually a, an alchemist? He has lots of different journals to where he was doing alchemy and he wasn't really a part of the church and he actually wanted to remove himself for the church, but he needed the title for certain things that he was doing. So this mm -hmm. is, just gets me into thinking people don't go deeper into themselves. 
but we gotta, that's what we're here for to learn that because everybody can have the same access. Yeah, man. Wow. And I, I'm, I know people watching this, they're going to trip out because that's, so that's the reason why that's part of one of the programs that I built It's called the elements of life. Right. I take mm -hmm. you through, um, earth, fire, wind, water, earth is, uh, grounding all meditation, uh, Fire is discipline, some disciplined activities. Wind, wind or air is trust. I ask you some fact-finding questions to dive deeper into who you are. And then water is flow and love. And I ask some questions surrounding that to have people just literally ask, what, you know, what am I doing? What am I about? You know, you're not your title. You're not this. You're not that. Right, it's like, right. you know, who is this person inside to really find out, okay, because my personal belief, and I, I'd love to hear your take on this, is that before you go into like this mode of like, okay, I'm going to be a doctor or whatever the case may be, I think you need to really tune in here first and figure out who you are. And then if you decide, okay, that's the, that's the, like maybe the conduit of mm -hmm. how I can impact the world then it'll have way more impact as opposed to you just jumping into something because right. what my mom said, I got to go this place or my dad said, you know, Hey, go to college or whatever the case may be. We're being led or dragged, so to speak, uh, in these directions, instead of being like, Oh, this is what, this is what I truly feel mm -hmm. is my calling. This mm -hmm. is what I'm supposed to be doing. But, but what, what would you say about that? Um, so I, t I talk about that all the time. That's that's why I always lead with consciousness being in evolution. And um, mm. some of the works that I follow very One of the closely, chapters in the book, right? I gotta I'm yeah. Gonna <laughs> some, of, some of the the works that I follow very closely is Stuart Edward White. Uh, uh oh. Oh, did I lose you? Hold on. What's happening? Oh. All right, we'll be right back. All right, I'm going to have to go to a commercial break on that one. We good. <laughs> but no, the, the, last thing, the last thing I heard you saying was uh, the Stuart, Stuart Edward White. You're, you were studying him. So some of the works I follow are Stuart Edward White and his wife, Betty. And the very first book that came into my reality was a very divine intervention type of thing. But it was the book, The Unobstructed Universe. And it started to help me understand planes of existences and, um, well, consciousness. And that's when I started to say planes of existences because they are different fields. And where was I going with this? Oh, um, it wasn't until I read this book with folded wings, which which started to have me talk about um, our basic obligation as a human being before anyone, before interacting with the outside world, our, our environment is to, is self-development essentially. And I th just think about from my early childhood education, um, a child from the ages uh, zero to one or five, sorry, is, collecting a lot of what they are going to then be. But then after they collect it, we, well, not after, but right when they're born, we throw them into interming intermingling with other, other forms of consciousness that aren't whole or centered within themselves. So then the, the structure and the things that we're learning, the attention experiment that we're feeding our body becomes something not of, of our, our own truth. And because that's just the way society is, by the time you get to the part where you're like, okay, now I want to choose myself. It's like you get opened up and now you're met with everything that does not align. And then you're met with this new truth and you have this feeling where you want to move toward this new truth. But then you, you've got all this, I, I call it like baggage. I call it unclarified sediment, energy that doesn't align. So yeah, what you have to now do is sit and take time to just, you know, start to piece apart who, who you are. Um, and, and, and I believe when it comes to those moments, like where listening to your parents, listening to, to other people, 
it, it can essentially be avoided when you do sit and take the time to to observe and be like, is this the right choice for me? Or, or when we lead from our heart or just like how I, in the beginning we talked about, I said oh, people reach out, but I know when to respond and when not to uh, because I'm reading the energy and the essence of people. And when people are choosing themselves, they give off an authentic essence and the universe responds back to that. And it does bring people with them. And so that's why I'm always like, when you can, when you can sit and get clear on yourself, what you're also doing is just, you're kind of making, not kind of, you're, you're, you're allowing the universe to, to work with you. You're getting into a state of flow to where you're not going down avenues. You're not putting your energy into misguided efforts. And what, what, I guess what kind of sucks sucks in quotation marks because even though those might not be aligned for you because you chose it it's still going to be the best for you because you're not going to learn the lesson just to pivot you back onto the right avenue and so that's why i will always sit with myself first because it's the idea that we need to connect with ourselves because our self is itself dualistic so if i can connect to that energy that is giving me this truth if i can connect to my to my heart to, to that love energy then yes i'm going to make decisions that are aligned with me always it's just a matter of that connection part and people don't connect or they're looking for connections outside of themselves and something that you you mentioned uh the elements which i i love because in your way i was listening and i was just like smiling because i was like it's the same thing you know we're all tapping into the same source the same energy and explaining it through our filter through our knowledge through what mm. we know and so that's why it's really important to focus on what you know so that when you're explaining to people there's certain vibrations out of your mouth that are going to resonate with people i know that i resonate with a lot of deep thinkers but then i i couldn't i'm not gonna go there but i know there's some <laughs> how you mentioned in the beginning, um, there's certain people that are really deep into, let's say yoga practices. I do do yoga, but I don't know as deep, but then they're going to resonate with people who are into yoga. So they have those same words, but it's like they have to sit and focus on their experience. The last thing I want to say on that is going back to your elements. You were talking about fire, water, air, and earth. That's that's something that I use to help myself as well is earth element. Yeah, it is grounding. It's, it connects to the root chakra. The chakra systems is something that really got me into that. The air element reminds me of mental um, mental uh, activity. It reminds me of clearing the mental activity, unclogging yourself from that so that you can continue to operate. Fire reminds me of action. You said, um, what did you say, drive? You said yeah, action. Discipline activities. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah you, it, action. It also, fire is um, uh, Aries energy. It's it's red, I think about red. It's what what basically lights a fire up under your ass to keep you moving. What's the action mm. potential? And then I, I think of, uh, what was that one? Earth or what, what is it? Uh, water. water. That's the yeah. one that I wanted to focus. You said, you know, that's love and, and happiness. Water is connected. It's one of the most important elements to me. They're all equally important, but water definitely is one of the most that we really should connect with because water represents our emotional, uh, our emotions, our emotional well-being. And uh, when we when we can figure out our best way to work with water, work with our emotions, in a sense, that is what yes gets us into the flow. Because uh, at the at the core of it all, it is love, and yeah, it is love. And so when we when we think about love being the source of all, love is dualistic. So love has love and hate. I think about white and black, you know, dark light, all of those things. And so we come into this existence, this plane, this lifetime. People talk about reincarnations, the same thing. We come here to grow and learn. And we can only do that when we tune into that love and then say, say what, tune into that love and then act on that love because that is our expression of love. And so I, I just think it's really interesting when I think it's really interesting to not sit for a second because we really are our own computers, our own masters, our own ascended masters, alchemists. And um, if we can start to get people to understand that uh, elemental work, however you were talking about it and something that I struggle with is just putting structure on what I do because I'll talk mm -hmm. about it and I'll hear yeah. someone say it and I'm like, Oh, okay, cool. And so the more that we talk about it, then we'll just be, we'll be better able to explain it to people. Um, because like, just like you said, I keep repeating it, it is easy. Um, 
that that's just that. And so if we could figure out some type of, oh my God, the word is a curriculum. That's the word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Curriculum for it. Um, where we just package it up and then put it out, it'd be super easy. And that's what I'm yearning for because I, I lately I've been calling my gift the gift of study is where I can just sit with something for a short amount of time and be like, okay, got it. Come up with yeah. a curriculum and it's funny because this is all just also with that word. I'm like, whoa, that's what I do with people's sessions is I sit with them and I learn. I, I just let them talk. I'm like, this is the energy. And then I hear from them. And then I go and I sit and I write 60 pages about themselves. And it doesn't even seem like 60 pages to me, but I send it off. And I guess what I'm doing is I'm sitting and I'm creating a little curriculum based off of what they told me and applying mine. Wow. Wow. That's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's and, and you know, what's interesting is the the previous experience forced me into that. Actually, mm -hmm. I, I wasn't a big fan of creating those, you know, that mm -hmm. type of structure and stuff like that. So I totally get what you're talking about. Um, even the book that, that the previous experience kind of forced me into making sure I got that completed so that I can add that to my yeah a skill right. set you know what i mean based off of the experiences that we go through but man that's really really interesting you you guys i, I highly 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 recommend y'all check out our tiktok the last tiktok that i just watched was so funny because or i think i saw it on your instagram where the, the chick was like i think she could probably end racism like she could break it down and, and probably end racism real quick just by explaining it. Like, i think she could do that and i was laughing so hard because i'm like probably if if people would be open to to thinking and, and actually listen to it and be like you know what that makes sense well, it it would because um, <laughs> i i watched that video and it's not often I, like i i actually went through and looked at the mentions and that was really cool because i i get really overwhelmed so i won't be on i'll just like post and go but yeah. i watched that one and i've had that thought before because of what i'm learning consciousness it's a very blanket like it's not you know black or white it just it is and so when i talk to people because this is truth essentially it struck a chord past ego it struck a chord past the material realm to where when people hear it regardless of if you know they receive it or not or if they understand it they feel it and so then it makes them take a step back and be like hmm. and and um i i i am i, I live a very diverse life so i've I've talked to all kinds of people and I understand all kinds of people, regardless of where it is. And this is something I don't really talk about, too. But um, because of this understanding of consciousness, I can look at, you know, people on one side of, 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 of the spectrum and not judge them. Because one of the things I love is, is people being the maximum versions of their character, because mm -hmm. being that it helps consciousness be. We have to we have to to uh, experience contrast in order to grow. Just actually, you just said it too. I always say people are, people know, it's just sometimes, you know, we need people to connect the dots is you're like, I had to go through that experience, you know, to understand it. Yeah, you have to go through the complete opposite to be like, oh, okay, I see it now. So when it comes to, if I were, I, it's fine, I, if I were to ever really like to, to uh, attack racism or anything, it would have to come from the point of view where Whenever I talk to people, I have to test out how they're going to receive and I take a step back and then I have to reword how I'm going to say certain things. But I guess that's in the gift is in understanding people at their core. I can speak to them through their filter. So if I'm talking, if you were very someone that was really religious, we could go we could go up to bat. I was I was on the phone with an evangelist the other day for an entire hour. But she was so confused. And I was like. <laughs> And it was actually, I just want to talk about this one more. Uh, she she brought up a, a Bible story and um and I was like, oh yeah, uh, but she she didn't under she didn't know what person it was. And she had told me, she was like, you know, I've been doing this for years, and uh, you know, it it was a matter of ego, but I was like, you know, people are gonna do them. And I I gave her the correct word, and she was like, I don't think it's that. And it was really interesting because I knew that I was right, but it was just really <laughs> <laughs> to see how people will move forward, but how they receive truth in their own way, it's a direct contrast to their belief. And so mm, I, mm. I was big on starting with the deoccultization of things because I was like, dude, all of this stuff is going to be a direct contrast. And if you can't be met with that, then you're just going to, 
fill yourself with turmoil. And that, and when I see that happen, that's when I remove myself and then I, I, I reassess, I pivot and I'm like, I just exist in my own world rather than, you know, try to teach them. Because then again, energy speaks louder than words. If you're being yourself, naturally that energy will start to mix and mingle and they'll start to ask questions. They'll start to think differently or they'll start to, you know, look at things differently because now their mindset or their belief system is not fitting on what they're perceiving with you. So then they're, they're like, okay, well then what? And it just gives people that, that interest. And that's, if, if that's all I can leave someone with, like imprint that, then I did my job. Yeah, I agree. 100%, man. Yeah, this was, this was a really, really, really good conversation. I really enjoy uh, we might have to do this again, man, because this was <laughs> this was good. I think we both could probably go all day on, on just a number of different topics too. But um, yeah, just lastly, what what is your message? What is your message to the world? If you could tell everybody something, what would you want them to know? Oh man, um, <laughs> besides everything, right? <laughs> besides all the things we have in our head, but if you can just hone in on one thing, what would it be? God, I, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. And it's funny too, because I was just staring at this um, bracelet that my mom gave me. It's gold bracelet. And it says, you know, seeking just something. It says the best within you is the best within me. And just thinking mm -hmm. about that, how, when we realize the, 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 when we realize the truth within ourselves, gold is the color of wisdom. When we realize the wisdom, the intelligence within ourselves it will just have a snowball effect. I'm even just thinking about these dominoes right here is when we can be set within our dominoes and then it's like that then tips the scales and just keeps going. So again, don't be afraid to have faith in yourself and be different and ask questions. And uh, it's 1202, which is angel number 222. Don't be afraid to tune into your intuition um, because that is the, the part that we need to connect to, to create our material reality. So I guess the thing that I wanna just say to everybody in short terms is just have faith in yourself and in the unknown. Mm. You'll be surprised at how it plays out and to never stop moving, God, and dance. Oh my God, dance, just move your body too. That's important, That that's me. Wow, that was hard. I've never really had to sit here. <laughs> yeah, all right, well well thank you thank you for that appreciate it man. For letting me talk and ramble. this was really good no trust me i know my the people that's watching this they're gonna like it it's, this is what's up we this is how we get down so it's gonna be all good but um again um you can follow imani on so many different platforms tiktok uh instagram i definitely recommend y'all checking out our tiktok um uh, instagram and youtube is Imani, what was the last part? Imani Arian. Arian, Imani Arian. So that's where y'all can find her. Um, take a look at our link tree. That's where you can get the book. Uh, if you want to check out a copy of Omniscience, uh, it is, yeah, it's very interesting. I, I just started getting into it and it's very, very interesting already. So um, if you're looking for that, uh, definitely go there and check it out. Don't come for me on any of my grammar. I do not care. <laughs> no, <laughs> the grammar, right. What the grammar, you're that? like, nope. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, because as y'all can see, hey, there's a lot more going on than, than the grammar here. Okay. So <laughs> if you got a problem with that, you're focusing on the wrong thing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but all right. We appreciate you guys. Again, thank you so much, Imani, for taking your time out your day and, and sharing yeah. your energy with us. Um, guys, always remember mindset matters more than anything else. And we will see you again next time. Bye.